Hi guys, my name is Sanjay Gupta. Uh, I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to do a video on a very interesting heart rhythm disorder called Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. Now, Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome is an unusual condition um, and can be characterized by sudden onset, sudden offset, fast palpitations where the heart, uh, the ventricles go very, very fast. Uh, and this can cause the patient's symptoms of breathlessness, uh, obviously palpitations, lightheadedness, dizziness, blackouts, chest discomfort, and in a very rare minority, sudden death because the heart is going so incredibly fast that that is incompatible with life. Uh, however, the good news is that this condition, if picked up, is completely curable. Uh, so I thought I would uh, share my insight into this um, uh, to help uh, people who may have been diagnosed with this condition try and understand exactly what it is. Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome was first described by three physicians, uh, Louis Wolf, uh, John Parkinson, and Dudley White. And what these guys did was they detected, uh, they found that in 11 patients, they described 11 patients who had a very unusual ECG pattern when they were fine. So a routine ECG, resting ECG, showed these three abnormalities. And these patients then started complaining at a later stage of fast regular palpitations, which made them feel unwell. And then uh, <clears throat> they presented to these physicians and the physicians saw these ECGs, found the palpitations uh, and uh, gave this condition a name. And they called this Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. So the ECG changes, the ECG changes seen on the resting ECG are the thing that make the diagnosis. Okay. Um, now, uh, what are these three ECG changes? The first ECG change is that the PR interval is unusually short. What is the PR interval? The PR interval, so basically the way the electricity goes around the heart is that the electricity is generated in our pacemaker, sinoatrial node. Sinoatrial node is a pacemaker that God gives all of us, all right, when we're born. And this pacemaker generates the impulse. The impulse then travels down the atria into the ventricle and the time the impulse takes from its generation to the point to the time to the point when it reaches the ventricle is called the PR interval. During that journey of this impulse it has to go past something called the atrioventricular node which is an area between the atria and the ventricle which acts as a toll booth uh, so to speak okay it slows things down so because the AV node exists the time taken generally from um, the top to the bottom the PR interval is that uh, is usually about 120 to 200 milliseconds okay if it's more if it's prolonged if it's longer than 200 milliseconds we wonder whether there's something going on with the atrioventricular node whether the atrioventricular node is not working as well but unusually in these patients it took a shorter period of time so the impulse was going through much shorter uh, in a much quicker time and therefore the PR interval was less than 120 milliseconds the second ECG abnormality they found was that the QRS duration was abnormally prolonged. Now, what is the QRS? Once the electricity gets down to the ventricle, it spreads into the ventricles. And the time it takes to spread into the ventricles um, is called the QRS. Uh, the, that is the QRS duration. And that time is usually 120 milliseconds. However, in these patients, it was abnormally long, more than 120 milliseconds. And the third abnormality they found was that and the beginning of the QR has had a very unusual upslur, and they termed this the delta wave. Um, what they then said it was that the reason these patients get the palpitations and the way you can explain these abnormalities is that these patients have an extra electrical pathway. They termed this extra electrical pathway the accessory pathway and basically what this extra pathway does is it bypasses the atrioventricular node providing a way for the impulses to get from the top to the bottom much quicker because they go down the bypass so they don't have to go down the AV node which is the toll booth which slows things down uh, and this is why the PR interval gets shorter because the AV node has been bypassed by this electrical pathway. Uh, they, the other reason, uh, and the, the, the second ECG abnormality we see, as I described, is this abnormally prolonged QRS complex. 
Uh, and the reason the QRS duration goes up with this accessory pathway is that usually the electricity will go down in the center and then spread over the ventricles. But if you have a bypass um, tract, uh, an accessory pathway then the impulses are going down one side and therefore it takes much longer for them to uh, spread all over the ventricle because they're coming from one side rather than from the middle and that causes a prolonged QRS and that is why um, you get these uh, typical ECG patterns. Uh, so they described this accessory pathway and they said Usually what's happening in a, in a resting ECG in these patients is that these impulses are going down the accessory pathway, causing the ventricle to contract and nothing else, you know. So it just looks like a normal ECG apart from these minor changes. But sometimes what can happen is that the impulses go down this abnormal pathway, normal, you know, they're just going down the normal pathway. But then instead of just sitting into the ventricles and dissipating, they go back up the normal pathway so you know um, they go up the normal pathway which is where they should have come down but they've gone down the accessory pathway come up the normal pathway and this leads to a short circuiting mechanism which causes the heart rate to suddenly go very fast um, now they can go it can be done in two ways this can happen in two ways either the impulses go down the normal pathway and then go up the abnormal pathway or they go down uh, the abnormal pathway and up the normal pathway. Now some people may have uh, an abnormal pathway but usually at rest those impulses are just going down the normal pathway not the abnormal pathway. So in those people you won't see any ECG changes at rest because um, the impulses are just going down. And in those people, the only time you detect a problem is when you see this short circuiting mechanism happen. You know, when they develop the fast palpitations, that's when you start suspecting that there, you know, there's an accessory pathway. So those pathways are called concealed pathways, okay? Because you cannot detect them on a resting ECG because the impulses are not using this pathway to, uh, to cause, uh, to go down into the ventricles. However, in those people in which the impulses are using those uh, the abnormal pathway they have this typical ECG pattern uh, now so uh, so these patients have an accessory pathway that's what I'm trying to say and sometimes what can happen is that the accessory pathway can provide a short circuiting mechanism uh, and the heart can go exceptionally fast and therefore the treatment in this condition is simple you locate this accessory pathway and you ablate it if you ablate it you have sorted the problem out because there is no mechanism left for the short circuiting. Uh, remember the Wolf-Parkinson-White ECG doesn't automatically translate into these people having the syndrome. Uh, we know that about one, uh, one in a thousand uh, patients will have a typical ECG of the Wolf-Parkinson-White pattern with the short PR, the abnormal QRS, the delta wave. But only one or two percent of such patients actually go on and develop their symptoms of fast regular palpitations and so those people who've just got the ECG are termed wolf parkinson white pattern those people who have the ECG and the symptoms and the tachycardia are termed wolf parkinson white syndrome now whilst this is okay the, the one of the concerns about this condition is that in some cases the heart can go exceptionally fast and that can be dangerous why does that happen in those people what happens is they develop something like atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter so in those people what happens is atrial in atrial flutter for example the heart is the atria are going at 300 beats per minute in a normal heart in a person who doesn't have an accessory pathway not all 300 of those impulses will go down to the ventricle because of the AV node. The AV node sits there, acts as a toll booth, um, as a toll keeper and slows things down. But if you have this extra pathway and the patient goes into atrial flutter or atrial fibrillation for whatever reason, then those impulses are bypassing this toll booth, can go down really, really fast and the heart can go exceptionally fast and cause uh, the um, cause the ventricles to go exceptionally fast and that can be dangerous but that occurs very rarely you know only less than in about one in a thousand of those people who have the ECG is it who have the syndrome not even the ECG pattern just who have the ECG pattern plus who have symptoms and most of these patients will have palpitations beforehand so they will hopefully have been picked up um, again 
if anyone does get this, then the simple thing is to offer them an ablation and that treats the condition. So how is this condition diagnosed? Well, if you have uh, impulses going down the, nor the abnormal pathway at rest, you'll see the ECG patterns. Uh, and if the patient doesn't complain of any palpitations, you don't need to do anything. You just leave it alone, you know, uh, because not everyone who has the pattern will develop the tachycardia. On the other hand, however, if you have a patient who is complaining of the uh, palpitations, then it's best to offer them an ablation. In those people who have an abnormal pathway, but the impulses at rest are going down the normal route, you can't tell. So you can't tell anyway. So the only time you will first detect this abnormal pathway is once they develop the tachycardia. Um, what else can I tell you about this? Uh, this is really all there is to Wolf-Parkinson-White uh, syndrome. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, and thank you so much for listening. All the best. Take care.